The delicate and complicated instruments of modern experimental physics penetrate deep into the sub-microscopic world, into realms of nature far removed from our macroscopic environment, and make this world accessible to our senses. However, they can do so only through a chain of processes ending, for example, in the audible click of a Geiger counter, or in a dark spot on a photographic plate. What we see or hear are never the investigated phenomena themselves, but always their consequences. The atomic and subatomic world itself lies beyond our sensory perception. It is then with the help of modern instrumentation that we are able to observe the properties of atoms and their constituents in an indirect way, and thus to experience the subatomic world to some extent. This experience, however, is not an ordinary one comparable to that of our daily environment. The knowledge about matter at this level is no longer derived from direct sensory experience, and therefore our ordinary language, which takes its images from the world of the senses, is no longer adequate to describe the observed phenomena. As we penetrate deeper and deeper into nature, we have to abandon more and more the images and concepts of ordinary language. On this journey to the world of the infinitely small, the most important step, from a philosophical point of view, was the first one, the step into the world of atoms. Probing inside the atom and investigating its structure, science transcended the limits of our sensory imagination. From this point on, it could no longer rely with absolute certainty on logic and common sense. Atomic physics provided the scientists with the first glimpses of the essential nature of things. Like the mystics, physicists were now dealing with a non-sensory experience of reality, and, like the mystics, they had to face the paradoxical aspects of this experience. From then on, therefore, the models and images of modern physics became akin to those of Eastern philosophy. According to the Eastern mystics, the direct mystical experience of reality is a momentous event which shakes the very foundations of one's world view. The Buddhist scholar D.T. Suzuki has called it, quote, the most startling event that could ever happen in the realm of human consciousness, upsetting every form of standardized experience, unquote. He has illustrated the shocking character of this experience with the words of a Zen master who described it as the bottom of a pail breaking through. At the beginning of this century, physicists felt much the same way when the foundations of their worldview were shaken by the new experience of the atomic reality. They described this experience in terms which were often very similar to those used by Suzuki's Zen master. Thus, to quote Werner Heisenberg, the violent reaction on the recent development of modern physics can only be understood when one realizes that here the foundations of physics have started moving, and that this motion has caused the feeling that the ground would be cut from science. Unquote. Einstein experienced the same shock when he first came in contact with the new reality of atomic physics. He wrote in his autobiography, quote, all my attempts to adapt the theoretical foundation of physics to this new type of knowledge failed completely. It was as if the ground had been pulled out from under one, with no firm foundation to be seen anywhere upon which one could have built." Unquote. The discoveries of modern physics necessitated profound changes of concepts like space, time, matter, object, cause and effect, etc. And since these concepts are so basic to our way of experiencing the world, it is not surprising that the physicists who were forced to change them felt something of a shock. Out of these changes emerged a new and radically different world view, still in the process of formation by current scientific research. It seems, then, 
that Eastern mystics and Western physicists went through similar revolutionary experiences which led them to completely new ways of seeing the world. The worldview which was changed by the discoveries of modern physics had been based on Newton's mechanical model of the universe. This model constituted the solid framework of classical physics. It was indeed a most formidable foundation supporting, like a mighty rock, all of science and providing a firm basis for natural philosophy for almost three centuries. The stage of the Newtonian universe, on which all physical phenomena took place, was the three-dimensional space of classical Euclidean geometry. It was an absolute space, always at rest and unchangeable. In Newton's own words, quote, Absolute space, in its own nature, without regard to anything external, remains always similar and immovable. Unquote. All changes in the physical world were described in terms of a separate dimension, called time, which again was absolute, having no connection with the material world and flowing smoothly from the past through the present to the future. As Newton further said, quote, Absolute, true, and mathematical time of itself and by its own nature flows uniformly without regard to anything external, unquote. The elements of the Newtonian world which moved in this absolute space and absolute time were material particles. In the mathematical equations they were treated as mass points, and Newton saw them as small, solid, and indestructible objects out of which all matter was made. Newtonian atomism includes a precise description of the force acting between the material particles. This force is very simple depending only on the masses and the mutual distances of the particles. It is the force of gravity, and it was seen by Newton as rigidly connected with the bodies it acted upon and as acting instantaneously over a distance. In Newtonian mechanics, all physical events are reduced to the motion of material points in space caused by their mutual attraction, that is, by the force of gravity. In order to put the effect of this force on a mass point into a precise mathematical form, Newton had to invent completely new concepts and mathematical techniques, those of differential calculus. This was a tremendous intellectual achievement and has been praised by Einstein as, quote, perhaps the greatest advance in thought that a single individual was ever privileged to make, unquote. The mechanistic view of nature is closely related to a rigorous determinism. The giant cosmic machine was seen as being completely causal and determinate. All that happened had a definite cause and gave rise to a definite effect, and the future of any part of the system could, in principle, be predicted with absolute certainty if its state at any time was known in all details. Newton himself applied his theory to the movement of the planets and was able to explain the basic features of the solar system. However, his planetary model was greatly simplified, neglecting, for example, the gravitational influence of the planets on each other. Thus he found that there were certain irregularities which he could not explain. He resolved this problem by assuming that God was always present in the universe to correct these irregularities.